Hi, Dale coming to you from Bronk Built headquarters again, and Harry Potter's birthday is coming up. And my wife and I, we're going to be attending a Harry Potter's birthday party. I decided I wanted to make a few magic wands to give to the host of the party so they can give them out as prizes for the party goers. While I plan on carving some of these wands, I thought this was a great time to try my hand at turning on a lathe. But I have kind of a big problem about that, and that is I don't own a lathe, and I really don't want to go out and buy a lathe. Hi, I'm Steve at the Carmichael Workshop, and Dale, I've got the perfect solution for your problem. You can borrow my lathe. Well, how awesome is that? Thanks, Steve. Come on, let's go. First off, let me say this is in no way a tutorial or best practices on using a lathe. Folks, this is the first time I've used a lathe, so I'm hoping you can leave me comments below on what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Now, I'm starting with the piece of sapile, sapili, sapila. I don't know how to say it, but I'm starting with that piece of wood for my first wand, and the first thing I do is to just get it into a rough cylinder. You know what? I know this video has just started, but I'm already going to call myself a liar and give you a tip. This tool makes a mess, a big mess. So keep that in mind when you choose a location to operate your lathe. I chose outside. Now I use my hand to figure out how big the handle needs to be and I mark it. From there, I use the pointy bit tool to put in a couple of grooves to set the handle space. I think that tool is called the channeling tool, but I'm not sure. I think pointy tool sounds good to me. Someone please let me know what it's really called. From there, I move to the rounded bit tool and I work those channels into rounded beads on each side of the handle. I also use the rounded bit tool to carve out the handle so that there's a little bit of an arc where it is slightly thicker in the middle of the handle and skinnier toward the ends of the handle. Back to the pointy tool to put in a few detail grooves into the handle. I'm totally designing this on the go, but I did see this technique before and I thought it was cool so I thought I would try. I take a copper wire and pull it tight into the grooves to burn the wood into the grooves. I think it looks really cool. I was feeling most comfortable with the rounded bit tool, so I stuck with that for the rest of the wand. Like I mentioned before, I went into this without really any design in mind, and I simply started turning. I wanted to just get comfortable with the tool instead of focusing on any pattern I was trying to get. So I just worked my way down the wand, tapering it thinner as I moved down to the tip. When I felt it needed a detail, I simply added a small little bump. Pretty basic, but I'm here to tell you, by this point, I'm already pretty hooked and having a lot of fun. Now it's time to sand, and oh boy, is sanding easy with a lathe. You do need to be careful to always keep the sandpaper moving, or you will sand grooves into it, but I have to say, this is the easiest sanding I've done. I go from 150 to 240 to 320 to 400 and then 600 grit. After that, I wet it down to pop the grain and sand a final time at 800 grit. For the finish, my buddy Steve Carmichael suggested that I use medium CA glue, so I pulled out my Starbond clear medium glue and used that. Your piece is spinning pretty fast, so make sure that you wear eye protection as you certainly don't want any of this to splatter into your eyes. Simply use it like any other finish and work it in. Super easy, and oh wow was I surprised at the outcome. Look how beautiful this comes out. Once you work your first coat in, give it a spray with activator so it immediately cures and you're ready to go. I did two coats with a very, very light sanding in between with 800 grit sandpaper. The only thing left to do now is to cut off the ends, sand them down, round over the edges so that there's no sharp edges, and use the Starbond CA glue on the ends and then voila, my first project on a lathe and I cannot tell you how happy I am with the way it turned out. I love it. 
I would have never thought of using the Starbond CA glue as a finish either, but it works great and I can tell just by the way it feels in my hand that it's giving the piece great protection as well. How about I show you my first failure on a lathe? I loaded up a piece of soft maple, and for those of you wondering, soft maple is still plenty hard enough. I'm not going to show too much of this, but I was rounding it out and I noticed a small piece crack and come off right at the end. I thought, no big deal. This piece was long anyway, so I just cut that piece off and started it up again and continued with my Ollivander's apprenticeship. My guess is that I had it tightened too tight and was putting too much pressure on the stock, but honestly, I'm not sure. I didn't have my camera running, so I didn't catch the actual explosion, but I don't know what I did. I hit an edge or I'm not sure, but the entire wand just snapped completely in half this time, and there's not really any saving this one. Now stick around till the end of the video, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what I didn't really see about the dangers in this. During our daily morning meeting, I asked Mr. Ollivander if I could try and experiment with my next wand and he said certainly, as long as it's within reason. I glued up scrap poplar and red oak in a kind of random pattern at the handle and simply side by side in the wand. This produced a fairly large blank so I helped myself out a little by cutting off the corners on my bandsaw before loading it up on the lathe. Same as last time, I started by roughly rounding off the wand handle and then the wand itself. I took small bits off at a time and went slow since this was very irregularly shaped, but I got it to a rough cylinder. From there I made this a very basic shaped wand as I wanted the different woods to be the star, so this has very basic handle and a simple tapered wand with no carving details at all. I'm using the same Starbond CA glue for the finish on this one as well, and when I'm done, I do like how my experiment came out with the two different woods. I do still think it needs something though, as it came out a little bit thick. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's plenty powerful and the wizard that this wand chooses needs to take care in using it. Well, I really thought I lost them, but I looked a little harder and I found my marbles. Just as a decorative piece, I'm gonna drill out a hole in the end of the handle and glue in a marble. I want to be very, very clear here though, this is only a decoration and offers no magical enhancement to the wand. Tell me what you think down in the comments. I'm going to really move fast through this one. I made it from a piece of mahogany and this one I actually had a plan and wanted to see if I could execute on it. This wand I took inspiration from the Elder Wand. I was not looking to recreate it perfectly, but just in the spirit of it. Certainly is not an Elder Wand look-alike, but it definitely makes me think of the Elder Wand when I look at it. Tell me what you think down in the comments. I have one more wand that I turned on the lathe, and it might be the coolest one yet, but I want to mix it up a bit and jump into a carved wand. I'm starting with this crazy walnut cutoff from the wand I made my wife that actually opens a magic box. Check the link up top for that video, it's pretty cool. I start by drawing a rough shape out on the scrap and cut it out on my bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you can use a scroll saw, jigsaw, even a coping saw. After that, it's time to pull out the Dremel and start carving. These Dremels, you can now pick them up anywhere between 20 and 40 bucks or even cheaper used. If you've never used one, you're missing out on a lot of fun. Although, it's probably messier than the lathe, so be warned. I use a mix of carving bits and ultimately end up with the sanding disc. I just carve where my mind takes me. These wands will come out very organic and really you can't make a mistake. Just have fun. No matter what you do though, you can never escape the need for hand sanding. 
I went from 80 to 120 to 220 and finally ended at 320. I have a vial of venom from Aragog, purely for academic purposes of course. A lot of people do not realize it, but that makes for an awesome finish on wood. Just mix it with a tear from a phoenix and the slime from a fire trail snail and you have the best wood finish money could buy. Don't pay attention to that Odie's oil jar cap up in the corner. Now that's just there for medical reasons or something. Okay, here it is in all its glory. Truly a wand any wizard would be happy to have. It's getting very difficult for me to choose a favorite. I did one more wand using the Dremel to carve. Don't forget the coolest turned wand and the no power tool wand is still coming. This wand is made from the scrap of my son's bookshelf build. Look for the link to that video as well. I've already used the scrap from that bookshelf in another video making coasters, so check for that link too. This wand is a lot of rinse and repeat from the last wand where I first cut out the rough shape on the bandsaw, then use multiple Dremel carving bits ending with the sanding discs, hand sanding, then finish. This time I'm using spar urethane from a rattle can as the finish. I only have a limited supply of venom from Aragog, so I'm saving that for another project. Tell me what you think about this one. Okay, now for what I think is a really cool turned wand. Well, actually the turning portion is quite basic. Here I've already roughly rounded it out and now I'm using the pointy tool, the round tool, and the square pants tool. I work the blank into a very standard handle and a simple wand with no details. The details will come later. Do you know what time it is? It's later, so that means time for the details. I'm using the one half inch spindle on my oscillating spindle sander and working the wand across it as I also spin the wand. I'm as careful as I can be to stay in the same groove with each pass to sand in a spiral into the wand. Because this wand is pine, it only takes a few passes, but I end up with this really cool spiral wand. On this wand, I'm going for the full Monty of designs. Now I take my center punch tool and I go to town with it on the handle. If I had to make a very rough guess, I'd say I punched about 253 holes into the handle, but it created a really cool design. Not gonna lie, this took a while, but it looks cool and is even going to look cooler as the next step is to use my wood burning set and burn the inside of each hole. If I thought the punching of the holes took a while, well this took about twice as long, but I'm really digging the way it looks. Now a couple coats of spar urethane and that wand is number six and a half. Remember the failed wand was only half a wand. I know I've said this on every wand so far, but I am over the top happy with the way this turned out. All right, I'm gonna make one more, and this one is for all of the people that say, well, I could do that too if I had hundreds of thousands of dollars in tools. This one, $3.99 Harbor Freight, a package of three rasps. I'm gonna use this and make another wand with these, $3.99. This one has sapili, soft maple, and walnut. I started with the flat rasps and just started removing wood. I tried to be as aggressive as I could be, and about five minutes in is when I decided that this was gonna be a lot more work than I thought. That sapili and walnut was not my friend at all. The maple wasn't too bad though, but the sapili and walnut took a lot of work to shape. I'm guessing if I would have bought a nicer set of rasps, it would have been easier, but carving this wand took several hours and I had to take several breaks. Once I got the base shape from the flat rasps, I'd take 60 grit sandpaper, sometimes 80 grit, and smooth it out a bit. Then I'd use the round and domed rasp to work out the details. You can bet, I'm not going to do another one like this, at least not without a better set of wood rasps, but it does prove you can do this without a lot of equipment at all. And about that, I've had people complain about my tool collection being hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions worth, but this is over 30 years of buying tools and many were purchased used. Even with that, 
I'd say I have thousands of dollars in tools, not even tens of thousands. So don't be a troll. And about using the rasp at all, once you get the wand to a thinner point, you need to be very careful and not be as aggressive. Or you're going to do what I did and your wand all of a sudden is going to come an inch and a half less because it's going to break. Since this wand easily had the most work into it, I decided it was worth my special finish made from my vial of Aragog's venom, a tear from a phoenix, and slime from a fire trail snail. Again, don't pay any attention to that Odie's oil cap. It's, it's just holding my cardboard down because I have my oscillating fan on high. Yeah, that's it. Tell me what you think of this wand. Well, here they are, and I gotta say, I think these came out awesome, better than I thought they even would. And oh boy, did I learn a lot about using a lathe and how much fun it was. I wanna give a special shout out to Steve at the Carmichael Workshop for letting me borrow his lathe. How awesome was that? I'll leave a link down in the description to his channel. Do me a favor and go visit him. As you take a closer look, let me know which one you like the best and to really prove that you know your wands, see if you can guess which two ultimately ended up not having any magical powers at all. Let me know your guess in the comments. Please like and share the video, and if you think I earned it, go ahead and subscribe. Now, I'm not gonna end this video by doing the cliche, point a wand at myself and magically disappear, but I do wanna let you know on the dangers of these broken wands, these things really sh